This is an AQA GCSE chemistry question, and it's based around the topics of atomic structure and bonding. Have a go at the question, pausing as you go, and then review your answers once you've tried. Okay, here's part A. Part B. Parts C and D. And finally, part E. Uh, you can see there's a total of 14 marks available here. So for the first part, student investigated the temperature change in the reaction between dilute sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide solution. You can read through that method at your leisure, but the question here is why did the student use a polystyrene cup rather than a glass beaker for the reaction? And the reason for it is that polystyrene is a better insulator. Bear in mind this is a two mark answer, so we are going to need more than that. Because it's a better insulator, it means we're going to lose less heat to the surroundings. For part B, where you're asked to complete the diagram, this I accept is difficult for you to do on screen, but it's an important skill to consider, so I hope that you are watching this carefully. You need to plot the data from the table, draw a line of best fit through these points, and extend the lines, note that lines, of best fit until they cross. The plotting is just taking care to do it properly. Read the numbers and read the scale on the graph carefully. From there, you are going to be very, very careful to draw a smooth curve. And you can see I've also extended the other curve back. We have to know where they are meeting. There's four marks available for that. Two marks for the plotting, one for the line of best fit, and one for extending back to where they intercept. Moving on to part C, determine the volume of dilute sulfuric acid needed to react completely 25 cm cubed of potassium hydroxide solution. Use the figure above. So you're actually going back to your graph. This is looking at the point where the lines intercept. So what we needed was 11 cm cubed. And you can go back in the video and look at that. If In fact, I'll take you back now. You can see that if I go to here and go down, we are at... 11 cm cubed. Determine the overall temperature change when the reaction is complete. Again, you are using the figure above. So it's going to be 27.6 take away 18.9. Let's see where those figures come from. The maximum temperature is 27.6. It started at 18.9. So the overall temperature rise, we can see, comes to 8.7 degrees C. Finally, for part E, the student repeated the investigation. They used solutions with different concentrations. The student found 15.5 cm cubed of 0.5 molar dilute sulfuric acid completely reacted with 25 cm cubed of KOH. The equation for the reaction we can see here. Calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed and in grams per decimeter cubed. It's a titration calculation. So you draw out the table, C, V, N ratio. You then put in the species that you know the details about and what you want to know the details about. And we then start to fill in the relevant information. We were told the concentration of sulfuric acid. We were told the volume, which I'm dividing by a thousand to make sure it's in decimeters cubed. I can then work out the moles by multiplying those together. And I'm going to use the equation to put the mole ratios in. Two moles of KOH react with one mole of H2SO4. So the ratio is two to one. And if I know the ratio is two to one, I can use that to find the actual moles of KOH. I'm going to double my 0.00775. I get 0.0155. Now I also know the volume of potassium hydroxide that was provided in the question. I'm remembering to divide that by a thousand because I need that in decimeters cubed. And I'm then going to use the N is C V triangle. So if N equals C times V, C is N divided by V. I do that and I get to 0 0.62 moles per decimeter cubed. But we're still not done because we want grams per decimeter cubed as well. Well, if I know that in one decimeter cubed, I've got 0.62 moles, I can work out the mass by using M is N times MR. My number of moles is 0.62, and my molecular mass 
is 39 plus 16 plus 1. I put those in and I get 34.7 grams per decimeter cubed. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening.